throughout all this time, so right now, with all this information that you've accumulated, what is basketball to you when you play it? What does it mean to you? Uh, basketball is is a lifestyle for me. Basketball is a lifestyle, as in a hobby, and also a reason for me to wake up early in the morning on weekends or stay late in practices. Basketball, basketball to me is everything. Just seeing that ball go in and the noise it makes when it does, like go in perfectly. That's that's. There's no other feeling you can get in this world. Uh, basketball allows me to escape the real world for a little bit and go into another world where you have certain different sets of like challenges to overcome but it feels rewarding in the end after every basket after every defensive stop it's rewarding it's everything to me basketball to me it's my life i think like i might take it really seriously like it's something that has gotten me out of dark places in my life and um it's like i'm an escape for me like when if i'm down or like sad about something or angry about something i'll just pick up a basketball and go shoot around outside or at a court or hop into a scrimmage or something it's something that i will continue to play for the rest of my life until i can't no more you learn the, that every single moment in life is an opportunity you only have small windows in which you get your chance to shine and so you have to put your all into those increments of life to fully get whatever you want out of it. I started playing basketball uh, elementary school years, so like grade six. Started playing ball because all my friends in the in Evergreen, Calgary, were playing ball at that time too. I didn't really take basketball seriously really until maybe grade seven or eight. We went into middle school for St. Stephen's. As a kid, Lake was always uh, seemed like he was a shy kid. He was pretty quiet. He always uh, chilled. He observed a lot. He wouldn't really be jumping and running around unless I said, Blake, go run around. Go go chase that kid or something. I was pretty excited when when Blake first started playing basketball. Him and his friends, all of a sudden, they, they, they were playing basketball and he continued to play basketball grade six. He'd be at the school, after school, playing basketball. I mean, it made him work even harder and made him realize that you want to accomplish something in life it's, it's not given to you it's you gotta work for it i think he's learning that blake a little more down tempo humble okay he's uh, considerate dependable thoughtful but has some other quieter leadership abilities okay and I would say maybe more leading by example rather than uh, come with me and do this way. And I think that also comes because Blake is an incredibly cooperative person. And I think that also comes out of his humbleness, right? I've never ever heard Bra uh, Blake brag about anything. I've never heard him you know, elevate his own accomplishments. And I think that makes his accomplishments so much bigger and more important because he's not there to show off. He's just doing the right thing. Um, I started playing basketball back in grade 5 in elementary school. I did boxing for a while, but I found basketball was more of my type of sport instead of a combat sport. So I started playing basketball more. I started taking it more seriously in grade 10 when I started playing club. Well, Brandon has become more self-disciplined and hardworking thanks to his coaches and teammates. Well, Brandon was always so full of energy. He was fun. He was a happy kid and everyone loved him and he loved everyone around him. And uh, Brandon was definitely a neat kid.
Brennan, I've gotten to know for a few years now, and my first word about Brennan would be that he's outgoing. He's on display, and he's not just showing off, he's just that person who's independent and, and putting himself out there. And again, he can't rein it in, which is good, it's genuine. So I see a real person there, and I see someone who has a bit of a, a leadership quality too, usually for the best, although I don't know, perhaps uh, perhaps there's times when Brendan is uh, using it for his own purposes, but I really doubt it. I think he's using his powers for good, and he uses it for the benefit of all those around him. If he's going to lead them, he's going to lead them down the right path. Great person to have a class. I've been playing like seven years, for seven years. And, uh, yeah, I recently started getting serious about it. Um, Malik's personality definitely changed. Um, when he was a kid, he was, I think, more reserved. But something that stayed with him uh, throughout the years is his sense of humor and his ability to um, share a laugh with people, which I think is really special. My Habibi is mashallah on three! One, two, three! Mashallah! I think the best story of Malik is before he was even training with us in the spring, uh, this past April, or last April. Uh, he would show up to a lot of the spring practices or like early morning shooting things at around 8 o'clock or 8.30, whatever it was. And he'd always ask me to 1v1 him. And I was like, if I beat you, I get a spot on the team. And I think I beat him 11 to 1 or 11 to nothing. And this was... I was a horrible basketball player at this point uh, in my life. And that just showed how bad he was at that time. But I will say a nice thing about him. He's improved a lot. I think he's one of the most improved players because he went from the worst basketball player I've ever seen, worst person I've ever seen pick up a basketball to a bench warmer. So that's great. I kind of wanted to build a character as yourself being you know, Hall of Famer, Eric Hamber player. So like, which year did you graduate from Hamber? 2019, I graduated in 2019. It was disappointing. My grade 12 year was very disappointing. Uh, Cause in my grade 11 year, we had a very untalented group of guys. <laughs> Not much basketball talent, but we were a bunch of hardworking dudes and we became very, really close friends in the 11s and 12s. And there were only seven guys on the team for a lot of the year. And we would be very competitive. Uh, it's not, And I'm not saying we would win a lot of games or anything or we'd blow other teams out, but we never felt like uh, we had no chance to win a game. Yeah, a very competitive group in grade 11. Not a great basketball team, but a competitive group. And in grade 12, my individual performances were worse because the team cohesiveness wasn't very good. Uh, the grade under and my grade were not very close. So we wouldn't hang out after school or hang out outside of school at all or kind of interact outside of practices. Um, so we weren't good friends. We were just kind of, I felt like we were two separate teams that year. What was your role like in that season? I would definitely say coach on the floor. Um, as a scorer, I, I wasn't a huge threat on the offense. But I could shoot a little bit. I'd get putbacks. I never really got post touches, but if I caught the ball off an offensive board or someone dumped it off to me, I would score on the side. But wasn't I wasn't the go-to guy at all. But I was the defensive anchor on the team. I was the guy that was talking the most. I was the guy that was helping guys figure out where they needed to be on the court or yelling at them to make sure they were on in their right spots. Uh, I knew every position, like every position's spot during a play and where they were supposed to go and on defense, how they were supposed to play, uh, sorry, what spots they were supposed to occupy in areas of the court. So definitely like a coach on the floor and kind of a defensive rebounding guy, most of all. Um, so when you first started coaching out and like you were told that you were gonna be the head coach for seniors, what were your expectations for our, this team? So when I first was, when I was first indicated that I'd be taking over for the seniors, <clears throat> when it was weird because 
for as long as I'd been at Hanbury, it was always Mr. Semby and Mr. Millette coaching seniors. And Mr. Semby was my senior coach. Um, so it was a bit trippy because yeah, great, coaching younger grades, it's more about development. It's not so much about winning because you have time. Seniors kind of like where you have to start putting it all together and winning basketball games. Um, but my expectations were that we'd be a competitive team no matter who we were playing and that we'd play hard and that would put us in positions to win basketball games um, even against teams that might be ranked higher than us or whatever. As long as you play like strong defense and you play with a lot of grit, then you have a chance in high school basketball. So what's the difference between this season and last year's season? The difference last year, I think we were a little more confident. We've lost a very dominant force in our offense and our defense. And then so this, the difference is that we had to learn how to make up for that. Yeah, no, spring league was interesting because you guys really depended on Legston, Charlie Legston for offense. He was one of the best players on our Hamburg team last year and one of the one of my favorite teammates to play with like he'd win like we'd win us our games but like he'd be a big part of that and then as soon as he gets taken out of the equation like what do you guys do who's going to be your scorer and Brendan you know he's one of the more skilled guys on the team but he's not someone that can average 22 points efficiently um like Legson, he was probably averaging 26 points on 60 percent field goal for you guys so so spring league was a lot about Developing, developing the offense and trying to get you guys more comfortable taking shots because I think when you were playing in your grade 11 season, you were kind of discouraged from taking lots of shots because the game plan was just give it to Charlie and see what happens. And I knew that wouldn't be the op an option anymore. So I thought it, it was just a lot of development, uh, offense development for you guys. No. When he graduated, we all had to learn how to play together, so we played a lot um, during the spring, during the summer, just to prepare us for um, this season right now. And so I think the biggest difference between the, our season last year and our season this year is that this year we've played with each other a lot more, a lot longer, a lot more games with each other. So we, we gel together a little bit better than the other last year's team. But yeah, I think this year we just kind of have to adapt to not having someone of that size to kind of like to work for us in the paint we kind of have to um broaden our s skills and whatnot to kind of adapt to the chain now that we're the seniors this year we're called upon to be the leaders of this team and we have to show like our grade 11 how to how to play on the senior level so this is kind of like my last year in competitive league and I want my team to, team to win because my team right now is my family. I'm looking forward to playing a last this last season with them and really showing all the other schools in Vancouver what we got as a team. You guys have become really good friends and that's helped us become a more cohesive unit, which is great and it's been awesome to see. And just as people, like, <laughs> you guys have become much better people throughout the season. Yeah, I'll say that. It's, um, it's our last year of high school so really we're living out the whole entire high school experience to the fullest especially being on this basketball team and like going through all the motions winning losing we we're taking in these last few moments of high school while we can before we have to fully grow up and go into the real world so with brendan Brendan's a brother to me. Brendan, I love him right now. No, right now we're closer than ever. Um, Malik, I know he's ha he has my back whenever. Oh, I love that guy to death. He's my family, my brother for life. Uh, Blake is a great teammate, great, a great friend. Love that guy so much, man. This guy's my brother. He'll probably be the best man at my wedding. Fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up. Fuck it up. Fuck it up. When you was at your lowest, tell me where the hoes was at. Hold on. He was not very coachable to begin with. And then he got a lot more coachable to the year. Ain't nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. 
and a lot of you are more responsible and more accountable. I love when you count me out. Especially you guy like Gavin wouldn't show up <laughs> on time for practice ever, but now he's usually there on time. Floor seats for the next couple models blowing hits. They don't even wanna pick, wanna lick up, wanna. Yeah. I done made a couple hits, going hammer with the pick. God handed me the gift, not the slammer for a brick. Rolling ain't got a tick. I attract a lot of ticks. Getting caught up in the mix. Hollywood same chicks. Didn't know that I be doing this. Went to school for paying picks. Now I paint the bigger pick. See I'm really with the shit. Hey, that's 44 for the culture. Tiffany Stone Fifth. I'm performing with the gliss. All the gliss up on the wrist. Waterfall, not the drip. Montage with a bitch. Massage with a bitch. Hit the ground with a pick. Whole computer catch a glitch. Um, well, like I said, our season hasn't started off the way we wanted it to start. Um, things haven't gone our way, really. It's definitely in the beginning of the season. It was very much uh, get mine mentality. Uh, I definitely had to shift what I wanted from this team, what I wanted you guys, what experiences I wanted you guys to get from this team. Remember, be don't we'll fucking be staring people down out here. It's not the spot. They say I remind them of rich, rich and part with the chips. Looking like a quarter lick. You a hater, just admit. You niggas be on one like Rip. I put you on to this shit. I was born in this shit. I'm the dawn in this shit. It's a video. Oh, yeah. Take Ooh. this, take this, take this. Look at this, bro. Look at that, no, switch it. Oh shit, that's the wrong guy. I thought that was the right guy. <laughs> Yo, get it to Brendan, get it to Brendan. Hey. Get it to Brendan. Listen, retire, retire. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna play golf, I'm not coming tomorrow. Yo, what the fuck? W, W, first W of the season. We're not losers anymore, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, just play. Don't, don't, don't put that in, though. Yeah, we were gonna put it in, bro. No, this don't put... No, bro, the, the, the retire? Like, yeah, yeah, wait, wait, don't put that in. Career high, career high. Zero points. Career, I got a jump dump today, bro. <laughs> Ten claps. Ten frustrations. Five. Hey, bro. We just won. Come down. Alright, what's on the radio, though? Like, what, we just gonna win in silence? But we got just let's, let's enjoy this win, bro. <laughs> oh, this yeah, is yeah, just keep the intensity and shit, though.
Hey Ryan, bro, you great? Huh? You chilling? What you eating there? Ah, I like that. Yo, Brendan, flex your, your player of the game shirt. Where's that what? at? Your player of the game shirt. Flex it. It's in the, in the back. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Should have kept it, bro. Look at Malik right there. Trav, are you happy? Scored your points? Yeah. 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 Um, let me think. Okay. Is your hair in a ponytail? <laughs> yeah. My hair's in a ponytail. Oh no, you got a new haircut. No, yeah, I got my, my haircut too. Uh, happy birthday again, Mama. Oh, you're just practicing for your, your games coming up? No, we've been, we've just been playing the games. That's what's been happening. Mostly just losing. We finally got. We finally got one win on Thursday against Kids B. But. Huh, that's a good thing. Winning's always a good thing. Like, my voice is gone, so like. Are you just again? No, it's just all the the yelling and stuff that I do when I play. Like I need to be like very vocal, so I'm like. You know how quiet I am, so I'm not really. My vocals aren't used to being loud as fuck. Then it's gonna be like this for basically the rest of the month until whenever the season ends, basically. Okay, stay focused. All right. Stay sharp. Mommy yeah. loves you. Love you too. Mwah. Mwah, mwah. So you guys have really had to move this forward, and what you can do at this tournament and you're allowed to gain tomorrow night is help us move forward. I know sometimes I feel like, oh shoot, we haven't had success with this standpoint, but you can push us one step forward, okay, by coming out and, and playing well, okay? And I think this is probably my biggest thing. It'll generally pack when you have a lot I know, you know most of you guys probably sat in the stands and watched guys play. Okay? No one who comes to watch you play, who watch you play, cares about how much you're spending. No one does. You want to know why? They want to be a part of a great team playing well. So, 
there's a young artist set in the there's a young ukulele content in the who's sitting here watching the play. And they're going to think to themselves, man, I'd love to play this. Okay, what does it look like to play in that Okay, what does it look like to play in this game? Does it mean you're busting your tail every possession? Okay, does it mean you get two or three minutes in the game? Okay, that you're going to be an impact player? Okay, not stunting. Okay, and I have to say that because they want to see me. They don't want to see me. They don't want to see the one person. They want to see people share the basketball, play the right way, and represent them in the school. Because there's not one of you guys that can represent them as a team. But there's a group of you guys that can represent them as a, as a school. And, and I just want to press that point. Okay? That if you want to do anything, it's got to be a lead mentality. If we bring that to tomorrow, sorry, to tomorrow night, your, your lead game, okay? And then Thursday and Friday and Saturday, okay, they'll get behind but behind that. And what are going on happens? Those big eights in the small gym. Okay? They're gonna sit there and say, hey, we're right. like, this is the way I need to get out of this is the way I need to box out, these are those balls I need to get after. Okay? This is the way I need to play. So that in five years' time, you come back and watch that play. They come and say, hey look, this is the guy. I watched how we helped bring down the deck and way bigger. Okay? I watched Shock go do this. Okay? And that inspired me. If you come back and actually watch a game and you move the crowd of what you're learning. Because the guys who come in and do it for the next three days, like guys who shot three, guys older than Sean, guys that are back and, and, and Josh and these guys, you're gonna see a lot of that coming in. They had a piece in getting us to where we are now. And now this is a chance for to move forward. Is that cool? You guys have what I'm saying there? Okay, great, awesome. You go dark. Sean, move out of the fucking way. Best friends, yo. Filipino best friends. Sideline, bro. Get on the sideline, Brody! Get on the sideline, Brody! <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Honestly, I, I, saw, I saw the basketball team last year when they were playing Midtown Showdown and that, that got me so excited for uh, basketball. I really wanted to make the team afterwards. I want to make a three, at least one three in Midtown. I know the crowd's gonna be excited and I'm gonna be hyped too. How are you gonna deal with that pressure? How have you been preparing for that? Well, especially last year, I was sitting on the bleachers watching the guys play <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, damn, this could be me next year. So, you know, all that preparation, all that early mornings. Well, this is my first, but also pretty much for all of the seniors, this is our last as well. So, I guess just come out, play hard for the school, you know, support the fans, the fans support us. And yeah, let's go get this win. I'm gonna give the crowd what they want. If they want a three, I'm gonna give them a three. If they want a layup, I'm gonna give them a layup. Even if they want a dunk, I'm gonna give them a dunk. I hope that we, I'm hoping that we win um, Midtown this year. That's my, that's my biggest thing. We were one game away from winning Midtown last year, and so. That's gonna be the highlight of my senior year. I really, I'm planning on showing up um, at Midtown and I'm a, I hope all my other teammates do too. Project, project. Oh, that behind the backpack. I wish someone recorded that. That was very good. I feel like it was blown out though, because I feel like it's just a simple behind the back and they find hit the shot. Thank the Lord. No, it was nice though. Yeah, and it was very, uh, 
You were very, you looked very comfortable when you were doing that. The basketball culture in Eric Hamber, well, it's gone from being something quiet, under the radar. It's become more and more that it's obviously the dominant sport in this school. One, two, three. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what it sounded like today at our first installment of the Midtown Showdown. Midtown Showdown 12. Yep. Big number. That means big plays happened. And I was so impressed by your guys' performance today. You. you know, I that. how do you guys just feel after getting a win like that? I, I feel I feel pretty good. I wish Malik got a bucket though. It's thrilling, you know, like the fans and everything. Like, it feels amazing. Yeah, definitely that energy. The energy today was crazy. Some of those buckets that went in, like the crowd was just going. You got you got some and ones, and and I saw you know a lot of those missed shots from the outside, and you just picked them up, put them back in. You know. How does that? How does it feel to have that kind of performance today? Feels great, you know, like to perform for my school, represent like represent Hamburg, you know, like it feels amazing. I love it. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And how did it feel, you know, you as kind of one of the core pieces of Hamburg basketball, coming in, putting on performance like that, and also supporting the rest of your team? How does that make you feel? You no, know, it felt good. I came out strong in the first quarter, got a couple n ones, but uh, came out slow in the second, got a little cold. But it still feels good to represent. Anyways, guys. Um, Breath is telling us we gotta go. A amazing job today, boys. All right, all right. Thank you. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. My heart is racing. This is the most nervous I've ever been for a Midtown interview because I am here with the GOAT of Hammer Basketball, Mr. Cool. Sembi. Cool. How are you doing today? I'm doing, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. That's fantastic to hear. And we also got Lucas, um, maybe starting next year for Midtown or playing in Midtown next year. How are you doing, Lucas? Uh, good. I can tell you're really ready for this interview. So, <laughs> Mr. Sembi, you know, yesterday um, was kind of the first Midtown that we've had that had the whole crowd. We had the floor seating, everything, and the energy was just electric. How does that, how do you feel as someone who has hosted this for so many years? How does it make you feel to have that energy back? Well, I'll be honest with you, like we were really nervous uh, because this is the first time we've done a full Midtown since COVID. Um, and we were, it like blew us away. We were like so amazed, like the cheerleaders are amazing, pep band is amazing, crowd was really into it. So like heart was really full. And this is like the first Midtown I've not, I haven't coached. So to look down the bench and see so much alumni coaching, both for the senior girls and, and, and senior boys, like heart was really full and to have alumni come back in the building, like just really, really proud of like everyone in our school and all of our alumni. Listen, today, let's be honest, Hamber will have a tough game, the senior boys especially, playing against a team that is a lot physically taller, physically stronger. What do you think, if you were to give one piece of advice to the senior boys, or a couple pieces of advice, what would, you, what would, what would it be, strategy-wise? Well, we, we always say that if we're gonna, we, we won, we've won Midtown once, and the reason we win Midtown once is that we always make sure that, that we have some tough teams to play against, and we're gonna say if we're gonna win it, we wanna earn it. Um, and this West Van team's a really good team, so. Um, you know, adv advice is just to like lay it all on the line, like a lot of heart, 
it's going to take a lot of like effort, energy. You have to match that and surpass that from your opponents. So that, that's a that's a super big thing for us. And I think they just got to shoot the ball a little bit better. I think I think these guys just need to be themselves. And uh, sometimes you get nervous and you have to try to you think you want to play like a, another team. I think if we just play like ourselves, we'll be, we'll be fine. There's enough talent on this group to to give them an opportunity to win. But like I said, uh, you know it's going to be a tough game today. Um, but yeah, I think we'll be okay. Some good senior leadership on this team. Yeah, I did notice that you have people like Charlie Castles, Blake Monton, you have Brendan Abacan, some really vocal leaders out there. And I think that's going to be a, a great fundamental part of winning today's basketball game. Mr. Semby, I really appreciate you being here today. Thanks, Caleb. And, and I hope to see you uh, playing on the senior boys next year. My expectations were that we'd be a competitive team, no matter who we were playing, and that we'd play hard. And that would put us in positions to win basketball games even against teams that might be ranked higher than us or whatever. I definitely had to shift what I wanted from this team and what I wanted you guys, what experiences I wanted you guys to get from this team. Um, it became obvious to me pretty early on that we weren't a great offensive team <laughs> and we didn't have many guys that could hit shots. So we had to turn our philosophy into being a defensive minded team first and trying to use the shot clock a lot. And I was trying to preach that for a long time. And it didn't really get through to you guys until recently, unfortunately, but. Oh. Oh. What's left of us? What's left of our lives? It's only you. It's only me, it's only us at the end of the night I remember when you couldn't tell me a thing How you talk so much, it drives me insane But you got you something great So what can I say? Um, how did it feel coaching the seniors this year? <clears throat> I didn't feel, uh... Frustrating. I'll, ex I'll explain further. But it's frustrating. It was stressful for sure. And the frustrating part comes when, because you guys aren't the best listeners, not 
every individual there are some individuals that are but in general you guys aren't the greatest listeners when we were playing West Van and getting absolutely blown out by West Van and he was taking the ball on the right side of the hoop and he was shooting it with his left hand and he kept missing those layups and I just yelled at him from the side of the bench like dude just use your right hand you have a right hand use it and he hit three straight right hand layups doing the exact same thing I was town zero I'm a hometown hero niggas going like Cee-Lo these niggas do anything for some C-Notes at what cost hit Mercedes bus with free car I know this niggas were so it's the mag- magical yeah, right hand out of nowhere I know out of nowhere and you know it's because of this club coach was being there too I think I talked to him during that game he's like oh shit Blake like my coaches are right there I'd say overall, it started off not selfish, but well, a little selfish. Um, and as we've gone throughout the season, we've learned together because this is also my first time coaching <laughs> senior basketball. So it took me a while to figure things out as well, I think. So we've all learned together how to become more of a unit and how to help each other succeed. And it culminated in that Carson Graham game at the end of Midtown. But it was also very rewarding and gratifying. And like I said, it was lots of fun. Uh, you guys are a great group of guys. And I enjoyed being around you guys for, what is it, 10, 12 hours a week, most weeks, even more than that sometimes. I really enjoyed being around you guys as a group, and I really enjoy like hanging out with you guys as people. This season, I'm looking forward to just playing basketball with, like, my brothers, my friends, the guys I've been in high school with almost the, the, this whole journey throughout high school, really just seeing this season to its end because this is our last year here. So it's really, that's what I'm looking forward to is just, um, playing basketball with my friends. Sit down and drink some champagne with me and let me rap. I'm balling with my friends. Staring at the money in a trance. Last season of high school basketball with some of the like some of the best people I've ever met. Just the people I met at Eric Camber have been like so good to me and like the friends I've made, they're like they're like my family. I thought the funniest for me would be when you literally yesterday's game Carson Graham, he said, put me in. He said Blake, go guard yourself. Go guard yourself. My doppel gainer. You know what? I was looking at that game footage last night. You and him look exactly the same. It was crazy. <laughs> if you had your hair out like that instead of tied up in the bun, because you would look exactly like him.
Well, like, he was not very coachable to begin with. And then he got a lot more coachable to the year. He would just do things that he thought was right rather than what the coaches were asking. And then this year he became more coachable, and that resulted in him getting 17 points and 9 assists at midtown. Basketball, in this case, will help us learn lessons that will carry on with us and go in through our lives. If, if I can keep that throughout my whole life, then basketball is valuable to me. So, like, our first game, <laughs> we took a huge L, okay? Or we came back stronger, and then we took another L. And then we came back even stronger, <laughs> we took another L. How many L's did we take? No, our first W? <laughs> okay, so when we, when we took our first W, I wasn't there. And the second time we took our, our second W, I wasn't there either. So later on, I was known as the curse, okay? What was the curse? It was the Malik curse. The Malik curse was basically... It's like, Malik don't show up, basically. Don't show up the games. And then, one time, I mean, not one time, one day, one game, I was fasting, and then I broke the curse. And now they can't win unless I'm there. That's basically a song. Okay, can we get Malik out the shot now? Like, I want to actually talk to Sean. This uh, season's significant and important to me because um, I get to play with my seniors, I get to play with uh, my friends, you know, my brothers on, on the court and off the court. Um, as a grade 11, um, I am learning from them to be able to lead my team next year. If you guys could have fun playing basketball, win some like important games and like hard fought games, and also just in general enjoy playing basketball, then that would lead to you guys wanting to continue to play for the rest of your lives, which is something that that's one of my main goals whenever I coach. I don't want to. Uh, sour basketball for anyone uh, because I know of people whose coaches have like ruined the game for them because they were too focused on winning and being competitive. Um, I thought that the most important thing was to make sure you guys were enjoying your like, especially for your grade twelves, enjoying your season. Uh, what are you looking forward to for the next seniors coming up? What am I looking in for? Well, kind of individually and selfishly, I want to. Be a better coach because I've definitely there are definitely rough spots for on my end throughout this season. Um, so I want to try to iron those things out. But for the kids, um, so yeah, I think my goals are definitely be a more competitive basketball team and develop or nurture a group of kids that are friends like you guys became very close friends, a lot of you, um, and are good people at the end of the day. So those are probably the big three. I mean, you can come help out if you want. I'll, I'll help out, low key. My stove lit my blunt for me this morning. Ooh, don't get me started. I just spent my last bit of finances recording. Sinking, it's an icebox where my heart is. Roll a whole lot, Marion. Get so high, you can't touch me. <laughs> you can't touch me. Send a pee, my speed, take time with the hate when the motherfucker try to rush me. Oh. She made it. Play volleyball. Play volleyball. Play Rush for it. Rush for it. Hey. Yo, is that the is that the DC X Men logo, bro? King Tower, bro. We send balloons to the sky for my new angel. I I sometimes when I get like this, I bump right through my house. Sometimes when I get like this, I might run a check up. I deserve it. Bring them cups out. I deserve it. Fully loaded and it got me swerving Put that pussy on me, I deserve it uh, Yeah, and she my friend
don't see my shoes been grinding me. I been up up a day. One day, this shit go fake. My kids like Friday, creep. Run me my money to day day. My F2 step on the payday. Peanut butter seeds going nuts on the E way. Maybe I ain't doing anything if I don't feel it, feel it. Got a feeling in my teeth fake. I'm motion new, don't get me. I'm choking the bottle, the I might jump on somebody. Cause some people got me so hard. So I deserve it Fully loaded and it got me swerving Put that pussy on me, I deserve it